Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we have Sanjay Sharma, the CEO of Rombi. They are a company focused on helping organizations get better visibility into their supply chain for on demand, on time, in full, in condition delivery of shipments and assets anywhere in the world. So, we're going to talk about the current supply chain, landscape, visibility issues, and challenges that companies face, what's needed by the industry to increase visibility for the supply chain, and how AI is playing a role in the supply chain visibility. If you're watching, on YouTube. We truly appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, as well as hit that bell icon so you get the latest episodes as soon as they are out. If you are listening to this on a podcast directory like Apple Podcasts, please subscribe so you never miss an episode going forward. Other than that, let's get on to the episode. Welcome, Sanjay, to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Hi, Ryan. Sanjay here. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, I'd love it if you could start this off by giving our audience a quick introduction to yourself and the company. So my name is Sanjay Sharma. I'm the CEO of uh, Rombi Corporation, headquartered here in Santa Clara, operating in seven countries. And our sort of mission is to use technology, combination of IoT, um, AI, analytics, to deliver real-time visibility of goods and assets move within the supply chain of our customers. Fantastic. Um, and when it comes to the supply chain, are there any, any kind of, um, I guess, industries associated with the supply chain or that focus on supply chain that you're focused on yourself? Or is it kind of just across all different areas and, and uh, things like that? I think generically, real-time visibility is a must-have now for uh, industries um, around. But our focus is basically towards industries that are looking for accurate and timeliness of data so that they can use that information to take actions. And there are some industries that are more interested in this kind of data than others. And those industries, for example, are pharmaceutical life sciences, food and beverages, the automotive industry, because just-in-time manufacturing is very important. So having real-time visibility is very important. Um, customers who are in the um, um, retail industry um, so these are the typical industries that would really benefit more than other industries when it comes to IoT and, and real. Let me ask you then, so with your experience in the supply chain um, kind of landscape, what does the current supply chain landscape kind of look like from your side of things? Um, you know, are there current visibility issues and challenges that exist that a lot of companies are encountering now? If so, what are they? But just kind of high level it for our audience who may not be as familiar with the space. I think supply chain, um, I would say the visibility is broken and piecemeal. And most of the customers that we speak to are, are relying on third parties that are um, you know, exchanging goods and assets from point A to point B, which is origin to destination. Um, some of them rely on emails and the traditional phone calls. Then there are others who basically rely on EDI uh, acknowledgements. Um, but but generally, what, what we are seeing in the industry is um, a lot of companies are looking to make their supply chain more transparent. Um, and the first step in doing that is, is there a way I can even start by analyzing my supply chain and identify the glitches in my supply chain? And that's sort of where real-time visibility starts off. Um, we are seeing a lot of customers, you know, what we call it as a five-day journey. Um, very interestingly, our customers would say um, uh, to us is a real time visibility starts off by putting um, you know, IoT devices or sensors on goods and assets on either problem lanes. So, for example, you know, shipments from Rhode Island to Guadalajara has more problems than others. Let me inject visibility in there. Or it's the problem skew. Uh, a 60-inch TV is broken than um, more often than others. I mean, so these are typical examples where customers start off their journey when it comes to real-time visibility. And so let me let me ask you if um, for a customer or or even just an industry as a whole looking to have better supply chain visibility, what is needed to do that? I mean, obviously there's the technology component and a bunch of stuff, but I'd love it if you could kind of take me through the different areas that really need to be focused on in order to drive visibility or better visibility in the supply chain itself? 
the first step is identifying what granularity of visibility you need. For example, some customers move their products only in containers. So is visibility of the container good enough? Or some containers are moving air cargo. Is visibility good enough at the at the, the air container level? Or some customers would like visibility at the pallet level and some would like at the package level. So I think identifying granularity of visibility that is needed is extremely important. So that's number one. Number two is once you have that visibility, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to optimize your delivery times? Are you going to make sure that you need visibility because you want to have effective security um, on, on your goods that gets transported? Or are you getting visibility because you want to manage risk around spoilage or damage? Um, so I think the second aspect of this is once you have that data, what are you going to do with it? So that's the second part, right? The third part is once you have made improvements in the supply chain, can, the, can you use now this data even further along to make your supply chain autonomous? In other words, can you take this real-time visibility, translate that into a transformative initiative within your organization that enables the supply chain to be self-healing, dynamic, and contextual? Absolutely. What about... Um... Other things, I guess from an industry perspective, I've talked about this with other people about standardization in, in the industry to make this uh, make, make solutions more um, easily adopted, technologies more easily integrated in. Um, is there an element of that in this space as well? Yes and no. I think uh, when it comes to the standards of adoption, um, there are some standards that already exist. So for example, if you are a company that is using airlines to move your cargo, uh, there is something called Cargo IQ, which is a standard coming from the IATA organization. And that actually tells you, you know, what are the things you should be looking for when these goods and assets move from point A to point B. Um, but there is nothing like this on the ocean side of things um, when it comes to um, monitoring shipments in the ocean. When it comes to standardization of um, uh, inventory, uh, there is standardization at choke point. So, for example, if you're bringing any products into the U.S. market, you know, the, the, the border security forces has a standard on how it has to be defined, you know, uh, uh, what, what needs to be declared, and what kind of data they need uh, from the goods and assets that, um, you know, onshored on, on U.S. land. What about... Um... I guess if a company is listening to this, looking to increase their visibility into their own supply chain or their products, um, how easy it is, is it to implement? Because you mentioned that in order to really do this successfully, you need to understand the granularity of the data you need. You need to understand kind of all those important pieces, how the integration is going to go, how the, what technology is going to be required. But with supply chains that have existing infrastructure, legacy systems that are kind of that are there already how easy it is to kind of layer this on to enable increased visibility? Is it something that is more feasible now, given the technology and where things are? Or how, how does that kind of approach? Uh, I think the, the, the phase one is fairly easy. Um, it's about selecting a provider, a service provider that qualifies and matches with your granularity requirements, and then just implementing that solution and lot of the solutions out there in the market, including Rombies, you can just start um, monitoring your shipments within days. Um, the second aspect is, okay, now you started monitoring your alerts and notification on the anomalies and the excursions in the supply chain. How do you handle that? How do you deal with that? That also basically would take you know, a few weeks um, for your team or the company's team to familiarize themselves upon and make them actionable. What becomes hard is when you are now you know, serious amounts of data on your products, on origins, destinations, your lanes, um, what do you do? How do you translate that to uh, improvements in the supply chain? For example, some customers would take that data and start looking at transporter behavior. 
uh, others would look at that data and start looking, profiling the lanes and the routes that they take. So there are many ways of skinning this data and that sort of becomes harder because that's pretty much tying down to the, the business and the fundamentals of the company and also what the priorities are. Deploying solutions like this, there's always the company that is more of the buyer looking to get access to certain data to improve efficiencies and, and grow the business. But then there's also the end user that has to interact with these interfaces and, and handles more the day-to-day of the supply chain pieces. How, is, how big of a kind of experience difference is it for both of those stakeholders? And a lot of solutions that I've talked to guests about, a lot of times it's a very different kind of vantage point that they're coming from. And building a solution that kind of achieves both of those goals is not always easy. When you talk to companies out there looking to bring this visibility into their business, how how tied together is that discussion with the end user who's involved in the supply chain day to day and the company itself who um, is looking to c- have access to this data to make better business decisions? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the same data would be differently and consumed differently in various holders, whether it's internal in the organization or external. And I call I call it the data magnification. For example, uh, an end user might be interested in knowing, if I'm a warehouse manager, I would be much interested in knowing when my shipment, which was scheduled to leave, has left. And then once it has left my jurisdiction, I'm no longer responsible for the second leg of this journey. The second leg of the journey might have an interest saying, for example, we have customers where the receiver says, I'm not not really interested in the entire data of the journey. Tell me when the truck is going to be 50 miles away from my destination. That's when I'm interested in knowing what. So I think it's, it's the data magnification, collecting data, but slicing this data for various users, um, again, is non-trivial. It's a business um, it's a business rule, I would say, on how this data needs to be repurposed. And there are platforms. I think the choices that the customer has to is there are quite a few platforms that allow them to do this with no code or no programming, and it's all configuration. Absolutely, yeah. See, that's that's important part. I mean, just as uh, just as important as the ability to collect the data through the different environments that the supply chain runs through. You know, the connectivity piece comes in. This is a conversation we have with people in the past. It's like just enabling better visibility through having access to better connectivity wherever the pieces of the supply chain are traveling. And that sometimes doesn't always exist, right? Um, so, so as technology has improved, as connectivity options have improved and work better together, you're able to provide greater visibility across the board to do exactly what you're saying, which is build a solution that works for all the different stakeholders that are intended in hopefully a low lift kind of capacity to get this into the company to see the value and then obviously scale from there. That's right. And further along, right? While there is no connectivity available, is there the, does the solution has the ability to continue collecting the data and when there is connectivity, can you push the data so that it can be replayed um, and, and and then you know, more information can be derived out of that replay? A hundred percent. That's a great point. Uh, let me ask you, so with, the, with obviously the explosion of AI, a lot of companies are now talking about how AI and IoT are working really together. In, in, a, in a solution like this, in an industry like this, how do you see AI playing a role in supply chain visibility? Because obviously this is, we've been talking a lot about the ability to collect more and better data, but with that data, how is AI coming in and helping analyze, helping just improve the overall experience and understanding of that information? The way to look at this technology is to look at through the view of an example. So for example, if you combine uh, artificial intelligence and emerging technology like graphic neural net, for example, if you combine this, you can really start thinking about the impact of a disruption in a supply chain on the supply chain network itself. So for example, if your product is stuck at the Swiss canal, can you basically take that disruption and start looking at what disruption would look like within your supply chain, but the fact that your products are not 
acting in your customer's hand? What impact would they have? The fact that they don't have that product, what impact would it have on an industry, on an economy in general? So network propagation, as an example, is a very big theme in supply chain. Can I basically bubble up um, a, a small disruption that happened in within my supply chain and really be able to see an impact, you know, um, uh, within the entire network. So that's sort of one piece. The other piece is looking at the play of AI and ML into digital twins. So when I basically um, are uh, launching a new product or, uh, uh, you know, redesigning my supply chain or putting a new supply chain network in place, before I turn on the the button uh, and, 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 and launch launch the network, is there opportunity to make a digital twin of the very same network and start simulating it with, you know, sort of pseudo but real-time data, which will allow me to start looking at, you know, what the choke points are, w what kind of challenges I would see. So I think co com combining AI with digital twin um, concepts like that would really benefit the supply chain and the supply chain operators. I totally agree. I actually had a conversation earlier today about a company that's focused on fake data is the way they kind of market it. But it, it, it's the ability to have realistic data that, you know, for instance, you have data that has a lot of privacy restraints and things like that. But you want to have access to realistic data to run simulations, to build digital twins, right? To, to show what kind of situations could arise and really test this out to give yourself the best chance of success, which I think is a really interesting approach. Um, to to this kind of industry that we're talking about now. Um, last thing I want to ask you before I let you go here is, for companies out there listening to this, looking to build that visibility into their supply chain, what is the best way you recommend that they get started or what's the advice that you have for them to be successful um, going down that path? I think uh, from, a, from a tech stack perspective, I would, I would encourage companies to start looking open stand tech stack uh, that can run on any cloud, uh, that can support any kind of sensing devices that are out there, it's a disposable or reusable. But most importantly, it can also be an existing IT ecosystem. It could be an ERP, it could be a warehouse management system, a yard management system, and things like that. So that's sort of the choice of the next step. But I think it is very important to start looking at internal stakeholders and the consumers of data. Who would which which groups of 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 individuals have access to this time visit and how they can be unable to take action? I think that's the second part of it, which is people and process. I mean, how how do you basically um, uh, put this uh, information in the on the fingertips of of your work workers who take action? So that's the second piece, and the third piece is starting to think about transformation right? within the entire supply chain. Where do you start your transformation journey? Is it at the planning stage or is it at the distribution stage or are you going to do it indoors, outdoors or in transit? I think there are some choices that a customer needs to make. It starts thinking about digital transformation. And lastly is looking at the choices that has been made, um, you know, enabling real-time visibility and digital transformation. Are these are these products, platforms, tools, technology, future proof? Can I basically make sure that the investments are people, process, and systems can outlast some of the um, some of the transformation journeys that a company is embarking on? So I feel those these are the you know key value points that uh, should kind of consideration by. Absolutely. No, fantastic insights. Thank you for, uh, you know, spending the time today talking about this. This is obviously supply chain has been a pretty hot topic for a while uh, across many different industries. Um, and, and the fact that it's you know, IoT is playing a large role in that, I'm glad we're able to kind of dive deeper into that today. For our audience who wants to learn more about what you all have going on, maybe follow up with any questions or talking points from today's discussion, what's the best way they can do that? I think they can... Get up on our website. It's www.rombi.com. Uh, 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 and then there is a wealth of awareness material there, um, resources, blogs, uh, videos, and obviously you know, contact information via LinkedIn or, 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 or our email channels would, would really also help. 
Perfect. Well, again, appreciate the time. Thank you so much and excited to get this out to our audience. Thanks, Ryan. Bye-bye.